Dear students, today we are going to learn the poem The Echoin Green by William Blake. But before reading and understanding the poem, let us know a little bit about William Blake. William Blake was born on 28th November in the year 1757 at Soho in London, England. And he died on 12th of August in the year 1827. He is a versatile genius and a famous 18th century poet. He is known as the precursor of Romanticism. He is a multifaceted talent. He is a poet, a painter, a visionary and an engraver as well. Amongst his innumerable notable works, The Marriage of Heaven and Hell, Songs of Innocence, Songs of Experience, Jerusalem, The Four Zohars, etc. are worth mentioning. The poem the Echoing Green belongs to Songs of Innocence. I will request my dear students to open their book so that they can recite the poem together with me. So come, let's recite. The Echoing Green by William Blake The sun does rise and make happy the skies. The merry bells ring to welcome the spring. The skylark and Thrush, the birds of the bush, sing louder around to the bell's cheerful sound, while our spores shall be seen on the echoing green. Old John, with white hair, does laugh every care, sitting under the oak among the old folk. They laugh at our play, and soon they all say, such, such. What the joys when we all girls and boys in our youth time were seen on the echoing green till the little was weary no more can be merry the sun does descend and our spores have an end round the laps their mother many sisters and brothers like birds in the nest are ready for rest and sport no more sin on the darkening green. So, students, this is the poem. I think that you have no problem with the pronunciation. We can proceed now with the explanation or elaboration part. We can see that there are three stanzas in the poem. So, let's elaborate stanza wise one by one. Stanza 1. The first stanza offers a jovial, joyful and vibrant picture of nature. With the rising sun, the sky becomes radiant with the glowing sunlight. Light spreads all across, making the atmosphere refreshing and rejuvenating. The happiness of the surrounding is reflected in the enchanting tinkle of the church bells. It seems the sound of the bells are welcoming the spring, a season of comfort and merriment. All the bars with no bar takes active participation in welcoming the spring. The skylark and the thrush soars high up the sky, while the birds of the bush, like the swallow and the sparrow, taste near the ground. But in this morning, all the birds mingle their voices to create a festive atmosphere or mood, an aura of cheerfulness. Amidst the positive atmosphere, the small children carry out their sport activities which provide them immense joy. So, students, this is the explanation of the first answer. Now we will come to the word trope or word nest. 
so you please note down the meanings of the words arise to get up happy jovial merry joyous bells here it refers to church bells welcome invite birds of the bush birds who remain close to the ground that means who do not soar high cheerful jolly eco reputation green it is a suggestion it signifies both youth and life okay now let us come to the critical analysis part let us decode the first stanza of the poem minutely let's see what are the points we can derive from the first stanza of the poem first of all we are introduced in the poem with an anonymous little child who is also an active participant of the sport activities he is the only one who is minutely describing the readers the joyful details of the atmosphere now you can see the word green here is a representation of life and diversity which reverberates or comes back again and again to small children or to childhood here we can find the use of personification also i suppose that you know what personification exactly is still let me tell you personification is a figure of speech in which human qualities are imposed on non human or non living objects in the first stanza if you notice you can find that the sun is personified as it is making the sky happy so the sun cannot make the sky happy being happy is a human quality isn't it, it? but it is here said that the sun is making the sky happy so this is an example of personification in the similar way the merry bells is also an example of personification bells are inanimate objects neither they can be merry nor they can welcome the spring similarly bell cannot make cheerful sound here we can get the examples of personification so i think that you are very much clear about the points that i have imparted to you better you go to the poem once to find out whether if you can find anything more please share it with me that will make our study more interactive okay now let us move to the second stanza okay in stanza 2 let us try to decode the meanings associated with the poem through the narrator we can know that old john and his followers are assembling under the large oak tree to see the boat activity that is going on john said is covered with white hairs here the readers can find that in spite of being in their final years they are laughing and enjoying by shaking off their crises forgetting their age of age here you notice 
age and age are homophones they are sounding similar but the spellings are different the first stage is e d g e that means corner and h a g e that is quite common word you know now though they are not taking active participation in the sport activity still they are connecting to the youth by fond remembrance of their golden days they came across and they are trying their best to remember the old days their enjoyments their merriments their associations and they try to connect with the children who are participating directly in the sport activity so this is it and uh, now let us come to the word trope please note the meanings of the words oak a tree which is found in waste here it is emblematic of wisdom care affection folk people youth boyhood days okay now we will try to analyze critically what we have derived from this stanza in the stanza the second character old john has been introduced though he and his fellow men were not the active participant of the play that is going around in the afternoon time but they are laughing and shedding of their problems actually they are forgetting their problems okay and become the part and parcel of the childhood through memories so how they are getting back to the green of the youth through the memory lanes memories here are the bridges to connect the old ones to the young ones memory plays a crucial role to echo the gain through nostalgia okay now we find the narrator is still in his childhood as he is still a participant of the play the oak tree is emblematic of the old age itself conveying both age and wisdom besides the oak tree is a one which assembles the people of the same age together okay i find different interpretations or themes that revolves around the stanza i'm sharing it with you you haven't heard maybe but carpe diem theme it is a very popular theme among the metaphysical poets of the elizabethan age anyway you will know about it later the meaning of carpe diem is to seize the day that means to make the complete use of the day or to enjoy the day as if it is the last day of your life carpe diem is a very popular theme amongst the metaphysical poets like john donne harbert and andrew marble the second theme is that death is inevitable but it is not very acceptable to mourn about death always death must be accepted with grace and elegance one must not grieve on death rather must put emphasis and concentrate on quality living okay so we will move to the third stanza it is the final stanza 
and we will try to decode the meaning. We have arrived in the last answer. Now here we can get a pen picture of the approaching evening. The sun with its ochre red shade is gradually descending, inviting darkness gradually. The children have stopped playing and as night arrives, they surround their mother's lap for warmth. They are eagerly waiting for the lullaby and betting stories. Now it is a time for rest. Here the phrase echoing green has been replaced by darkening green as the phrase darkening green signifies the reflection of the night on green vegetation. It is the end of the day. Okay, so this is what simply we can derive from the stanza. Now let's look at the word trope. Basically the poem has been written in a simple and lucid language. So there are few words which we will look for meaning like the word worry means tired, descent means go down and darkening that means getting intense. We will now critically analyze what is there in the third stanza. See the stanza is just the opposite of the first answer. What do you find in the first answer? The first answer is full of life, energy, light, cheerfulness and vivacity. But in the first answer, as the impending night is a symbol of death, the stanza is somewhat getting gloomy and most. Instead of using the word echoing, the word darkening has been used. As when everything ends, it becomes dark. Okay, now I will talk about a figure of speech, a very important figure of speech, simile. You might have heard about simile. Simile is the explicit comparison between two unlikely objects. Like here you can see the sisters and the brothers or little children are being compared to the bars of the nest. These two concepts are totally different. Still comparison is being drawn but the use of the word like indicates that it is not a metaphor but a simile. And okay, what is metaphor? I will tell you later. So, the stanza denies the unfading reality. Rather, it reflects more on dynamism. The dynamic aspect, the changing aspect of life. The narrator here is mentioning of little children which is indicative that the narrator is not a little child anymore. He is in his growing phase. It is an absolute truth that life will move through a cycle of birth and death. The darkening green does not really reflect pessimism. Rather, it is suggestive of the next generation or the next bright morning where green or life or new energy will again appear with full blossom. People may get replaced but the cycle is eternal. There will be again a new day, new children, and new generation and thus this reality 
will be good from generation to generation. The youth will be good from generation to generation. Life will come back again and again in different forms maybe, but it will come back. It will not go away forever. Right? So, this is the essence of what we have derived from the poem. Okay? So, I suppose that uh, the style of the poem is impressive. When you read the poem at once, it seems that it has a very simple meaning. But when you read it again and again, the different layers of understanding will be unraveled in a slow but steady manner. Okay guys, so keep on reading and if you find any suggestion or if you find some different versions of explanation as its literature, you can find a different version of explanation. So, please do share with me so that we can get enriched and contented. Children, I hope that you have understood the poem. If you have any more ideas or if you have any more points to mention, you can do it in the comment box and feel free to contact with me through my WhatsApp number. Thank you for your patience. Have a nice day.